following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Hello. Jack DeGraw. Yankee, How are you, Al? Yankee baseball. We are, it's a long overdue post-mortem of the 2018 season. And uh, I thought we'd start with you, Jack. What the hell happened at the end? Well, I'll tell you, Ralph. I, I think the case is you got to give the Red Sox credit. Okay. And uh, I, I just think, you know, when you look at it, the Red Sox had a better team. Uh, the only question I have in the Red Sox-Yankee series, I didn't like in the fourth game that uh, Boone didn't start Andujar. Yes, that I wondered about that, and um, I thought I'd ask you, was there a reason given? Well, I think because they had CC uh, starting, and they, they, they'd rather have Walker in the lineup because of his glove. I, I mean, they still don't trust Andujar's glove. And it's not his glove that he's throwing. Mm -hmm. He has been a little erratic, let's put it that way. That's... Uh... Uh, no question about that. Funny, though, um, we knew going into the season that it was kind of a risk uh, You uh, having two rookies in the infield, and it took a, that long for that to come up. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. They both had terrific years. Yeah, they were they were fantastic. I mean, you know, to get two young guys who were just in, you know, A ball a few seasons back, and I mean, to come into the pressure in New York and perform, uh, you know, like all stars, it's, uh, it, you know, it's terrific. Now, do you recommend, if you were um, a consultant, an advisor to the Yankees, would you recommend filling DD's shoes with a signee? maybe a Machado or whatever, or would you recommend Gelbar moving over and maybe Walker playing second base? Well, I, I you know, I like Didi, and I, you know, the only reason I think the Yankees will get Machado is because, you know, they might have to wind up trading Andujar, you know, to get, uh, you know, Cutchels from the, the Indians. Right. Right. And, you know, if if you want a, a, a top flight starter, you know, you have to give up a lot. Do you think Machado is a shortstop or do you think he's a third baseman? Well, I think if, you know, if Didi comes back, he's a third baseman. I mean, I think he can play an attic with shortstop, but I don't think he's a top flight defensive shortstop. Offensively, he's terrific. Do you think the things that he did or and said, um, the way he played, the cheap shot he took at um, going to the inside of the base, uh, saying, I don't have to hustle, it's not in my DNA to hustle, um, do you think that's going to end up making him a, ch a cheaper sign? Do you think it's... Uh, an insight to his the real him, the the real Machado, and is he going to be that punk for the rest of his career, or was that just uh, is he just young? Can he grow out of it? Um, it already cost him some money. Has to have cost him bucks. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I do think it's a big concern. I mean, when somebody comes out and says, you know, I, I don't hustle, and when he deliberately tried to spike that guy at first base, that is, uh, you know, a major concern. I think a lot of the teams, and I think the Yankees are, you know, included, you know, they're doing a lot of background checks and stuff just to see because you don't want to get a guy like that and put him in New York. And, I mean, you've got these great examples. You've got – Torres and Andrew Har, and you got you couldn't find a better uh, better ball player individual than Aaron Judge. So I mean, do you really want to put somebody like that in the mix? In the clubhouse, you want that guy in the clubhouse, in other words. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, big decision because uh, the um, the winter meetings are coming up, and you have to have an idea of what you're going to do. Have they indicated any anything that they might do to? Because it doesn't look like DD is going to be available to much of the season. No, I uh, I really don't know what you know where they're where they're going to go right now. I think probably if the season started tomorrow, they would have Teray as a shortstop, and you know I, I think they would sign some veteran guy, you know, just to, and I they have some they did sign somebody from the Tex from Texas who had some infield experience, so they're going to stick him in the AAA, but. Uh, as of right now, it'd be uh, Torres, but I but I think eventually they'll find a veteran guy to uh, you know fill the infield spot reserve. Okay, let me ask you about first base. Um, Luke comes in. Is it clear that he's the guy of the future? Um, what what do you think about that? Well, I, I think now isn't I think Goldsmith from Arizona is you know uh, a free agent or he's a possible trade guy. I think right now you would have Boyd at first, and uh, you know you, you, I don't think you give up on Greg Bird yet. But uh, I think Ralph, they'll, you know, they'll go for a first baseman too because I don't think they're sold on Boyd 100. percent Okay, um, what will? Bird just surprised. That's the only thing I can say. He was just on such an upward trend and looked so good. Could the year be just an aberration, or um, is it what you see you get? Well, like I say, I don't think you give up on the guy, but I think this year coming up is a, a make-or-break, uh, you know, a make-or-break season as far as him being with the Yankees. And, I mean, he still has options. You can stick him in AAA, but I think he's pretty much done whatever he can do with AAA. You know, it's time to, uh, you know, step up or, uh, you know, he'll be out of New York. Okay. I'm going to ask you a tough question. All things considered, do you think Boone took them as far as Girardi would have taken them? Or do you think Girardi might have taken them further had he been the manager? Um tough question. It may not even be a right or wrong question. It's just an opinion thing. Well, for most of the season, I love the job that Boone did. I think, you know, who knows what anybody would would do. But I I didn't like the fact that he didn't start Andujar in game four. Right. You mentioned that. Yeah, that was sort of like, that looks like one of those analytical moves and stuff like that. And, you know, all year, you know, we've been talking about the Yankee pitching, and it, it really cut, it really showed in the Boston series, you know, when you had to start CC in game four, and Severino didn't have it, Tanaka pitched a great game, and Hap just had a bad night. But I, I really think you've seen it in that series that, uh, you know, there was a lack of pitching. No question. Um, I liked your answer to the first question I asked you. Um, what happened, and it wasn't a question so much of what happened with the Yankees that was negative. They won like 90-plus games. Just Boston pulled the year out. They were terrific, and they have to rank as uh, one of the best teams of the decade, which is basically all you can we can compare teams to. We can't go back and compare them to the 27 Yankees for – a myriad of reasons, but we can compare them to recent teams, and uh, they they rank high no matter how you judge, uh, from relief pitching on on up. Well, I mean, just look what they did in Game Four, Ralph. I mean, they had lost a third game in like 18 innings. And they only scored one run. In Game Four, they're down four nothing after six innings against the Dodger bullpen, which, right. you know, struggled in the playoff, and they score nine runs in three innings after scoring maybe one run in 24 innings. I mean, uh, you know, that just tells you something about that team. I mean, they were they were amazing. 
And, you know, if you want to pay homage to a guy who really came back strong, and that's uh, David Price. Got to give him a lot of credit. Yeah, he had struggled in the playoffs, especially as a starting pitcher. Though the first year with the Rays, when he'd come out of the bullpen, he, he did well. But uh, he was he was outstanding in the World Series and in the final game of the you know the, the championship series. I mean, he was a big difference. Okay, I'll ask you one other question because uh, catching has been everything with the Yankees since I'm a kid. Since my grandfather followed Bill Dickey. What about this catcher? Um, um, is it Sanchez? Is he? Uh, the kind of guy that you could hope snaps out of that um, the attitude, grows up, matures, what do you, or if you could trade him for a real top-notch catcher that can handle pitchers, would you? Well, I, right now they're, they're looking at the, guy, the catcher from uh, Miami. Right. You know, they really like him. I, Ralph, personally, I would still sit, uh, stick with Sanchez. I mean, he's working with Pudge Rodriguez now, and that can only help. But, I mean, the defense is definitely a big issue. I mean, for years people complained about Posada. But, I mean, Posada, Posada wasn't, he was all right. Posada was all right defensively. But when you see the kind of year Sanchez had last year, I mean, some of the games he had, I mean, it was, it was just woeful. It was. <laughs> but how do you give up on 50-plus home runs? What did he, did he hit 50 or he had a bunch of home runs? Um, well, years. in a short amount of time, Ralph, he's probably got over – Almost 60 home runs in, in like 100, and, you know, uh, 75 games maybe. So you don't give up on the bat because a bat like that is just, uh, you know, it, it's a game changer. Changer, and you've seen that in the playoffs. He had some big hits. Comes down to a lot of times, do you want to give money to a guy? <laughs> yeah, um, Machado, a guy like like him, goes back to Erod and what have you. Are you comfortable from a corporate standpoint of giving money to a guy like that? And will he ever be able to turn that public persona around? Because it really is an entertainment business. And if you're going to put butts in the seats, sometimes it has to be a popularity contest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, we'll look at it this way, Ralph. Just say the Yankees signed Machado and they signed Harper. I mean, could you imagine all the money they would make before the Christmas holidays and selling T-shirts and selling jerseys? Mm -hmm. Look how much money the Yankees made with A-Rod, you know, just selling his uh, merchandise. So, I mean, you you make the money back, uh, you know, ten times over, really. Uh, you know, that's why I can't understand the crosstown rival New York Mets not willing to sign a guy like Bryce Harper. Put some money into him. It's not spending money. It's investing money. And that's what I don't understand about certain businesses, uh, certain baseball franchises that operate that way. You can't always go on the cheap. And sometimes you have to take a risk just to show the fans that you're trying. I, as you know, you were going to say. No, I, I mean, I agree with you, Ralph. It looks like sometimes these teams, they, you, 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 you have to question, do they really want to win? Right. You know, do they really want to put a good product on the field? Or they just, you know, want to hang around and win 80, 85 games and compete for the second wild card, or do you really want to go for it? And I think one of the things with George, I mean, with Steinbrenner and stuff, you didn't always have to like his tactics, but you knew he always wanted to win. Absolutely. And as a Mets fan, growing uh, up in New York, but following the Mets and Yankees uh, from out in California, I always, I didn't like George, didn't like the type of person he was, didn't like uh, um, how he absolutely bullied and terrorized uh, folks. He was very Trump-like, 
if, if you will. Um, yeah, if you excuse is. the expression. Uh, it, um, but I did like the fact that he would put the money out and he would keep the fans, you know, just um, feeling like he's doing everything he can to back them up, that, that sort of thing. Um, let me ask you this. What did you like best about the baseball, not just the Yankees, what did you like best about the baseball season? Well, I thought the playoffs were incredible. I mean, uh, it, it really shows what a you know a, a great game baseball is and baseball can be. And uh, you know, just seeing some of these young kids come up and I mean, baseball is always great. I mean, you know, I can say bad things, we can all say things about it, but it's a wonderful sport. And uh, you know, now that it's not around, I, I miss it. Oh yes, absolutely. What do you do for your baseball, Jones? Now you're in Florida, you're close to where they have. Uh, Extended spring training, minor league games. Um, what's going on that you could see prospects uh, during the winter where you are? Well, the thing is, Ralph, a lot of these kids, uh, you know, they they do it for all teams. So they'll, they'll come down here maybe in November. And, you know, they'll be working out at the complex. And, you know, they'll leave a few weeks before Christmas. And then they'll come back uh you know, in uh, in January and stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, Dylan Batantis was down here, I was talking to him, and he said he spent like six months in New York, and the rest of the time he was down here rehabbing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it, go ahead. You want to uh, chime in on Florida election? Is there anything you want to say going on that um, – about the system or about what's, you know, what it is. It's um, the 12th of November, and I want to hear from you. Well, I mean, the thing is, Ralph, I mean, it, it's still the old boy network down here. And, I mean, politicians, for the most part, are a bunch of crooks and stuff. But, I mean, like, you, you, there's always a trouble with the count. They can't count this. They can't count. So, I mean, there, there's something fishy going on. Anything involved with politics, you know, uh, I, I'm always skeptical because I, I, I don't trust any of them. Okay. Well, that brings us up to date on everything, doesn't it, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, but I'll ask you my final question. What in 2019 do you hope happens? Uh, naturally, a world championship, but to get there, what do you what do you see developing to uh, that's good? Well, I look I look for uh, you know Torres and Andujar if they don't trade him, and uh, you know the guys like Jordan Montgomery, Montgomery improving, uh, seeing Stanton have a better year. And, you know, just seeing Judge come on and, you know, and, and Sanchez. I mean, there, there's so much to be excited about. I mean, uh, they, the Yankees haven't had a losing season since 92. And, uh, you know, there, there's just uh, – being a Yankee fan, it's, it's exciting. It is great. I, um, I can't tell you how when I made the decision to uh, be a New York Giant fan at age five – how it could just have easily, it was 1951, and the Giants and Yankees played in the World Series that year. And Gil McDougal hits a home run against the Giants to break their heart. I think it was Grand Slammer, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 13-1. <laughs> right, right. And I, the irony is, growing up in New York, I had a love-hate relationship with the Yankees, and Gil McDougal ends up being my favorite player of all-time Yankees. Um, until I got to interview Joe DeMastri, that, um, who was a utility infielder for them um, in, in the, on the 1961 Yankees. I can yeah. end as good a, good a team as there ever was. Um, that that was terrific. The year that um, Nanel and Maris fought it out for uh, for the home run championship to break, 
Yeah. Break Babe Ruth's record. So, well, um, go ahead. Get, getting back to Gil McDougal, Ralph, I mean, here's a guy, he made the all star team at second base, third base, and shortstop. I mean, there's one of the guys you don't hear about much anymore, but he was a, a terrific player. Jack, and if you look you're up, absolutely right. And not only did he do that at all three positions, but he was a regular at all three positions when the Yankees won championships. So um, he was a regular third baseman in 51 when they won it. I think it was a shortstop in 56 uh, or whatever. But um, he did that. He was terrific. Oh, he was. Um, killed his career when he hit Herb Score in the eye. Killed his intensity. Um, he just didn't have that, you know, desire anymore. Well, one of one of the things too, Ralph. I mean, he got hit in the ear. I think with a line drive, Enos Slaughter hit him in the ear, and he lost his hearing for almost twenty years. And he finally got it back late in his life because I had the pleasure of meeting him a few times, uh, and uh, he coached Fordham too baseball. He did, and uh, there was some sort of new technology that he w made him able to hear. Not quite um, full capacity, but he was able to hear. I remember reading his um, his grandchildren's voices for the first time, and that was cool as hell. Um, yeah, I didn't remember him being hit in the ear. I didn't remember that's how he um, lost it. And Enos Slaughter was uh, the guy who hit him. Uh, he must have been playing with well, Kansas City at the time. Yeah. Now, I, I'm not positive it was Enos Slaughter, Ralph. You know, you could, well, ha I'll have to do some research on that. But he uh, did get hit in the ear. It might have been Hank Bauer who hit him, but he got hit during batting practice. Oh, okay. Then it could have been either of them because Slaughter pl played for the Yankees at one time as well as Kansas City. And yeah. And Bauer naturally was the right fielder. Um, ah, so that, that, that explains that. Um, but it was a miracle, and then he he left us too early as well. Um, we're, we're losing a lot of a lot of our heroes. Well, I'll tell you, Ralph. All, all the old guys. I mean, I used to write to them. You know, I get my old yearbook signed and the pictures. And right. Gil McDougar and Hank Bauer. They they were they were terrific. I mean, you talk about uh, that was a great generation. Anybody born 1900 to 1940. Uh, they're just terrific human beings. Jack, you mentioned yearbooks, Yankee yearbooks in particular. My favorite Yankee yearbook was the 1957 unofficial Yankee yearbook. They had a company print yearbooks yep. without Yan the Yankee consent, but it was so well done, and it had... Um, if I'm not mistaken, and boy, I haven't had this yearbook in my possession for so long, but if I'm not I mistaken. I have it, Ralph. You have it? Yeah, it's oh. J Publication. And it says right on it, the unofficial Yankee yearbook. Am I correct? It, yeah, it's, because it, it didn't have any advertisements in it. And it's glossy, and yep. um, it's got what I consider to be as a kid. Remember, I'm 11 when this comes out. And, uh, you know, I'm just, all I want is information on baseball. That's, a, <laughs> that's the same as I am now, all these years later. And it had, and correct me if I'm wrong, a depth chart of the Yankee organization, of, of yep. who was coming up, if I'm remembering that correctly. That was a great yearbook. I look for that on eBay from time to time. I'm sure someday I'll be able to find it. Um, thanks for reminding me. It was JB something? It's it's J J A Y publication, J and you can still find them on uh, eBay, Ralph. See, a lot of times I buy this stuff. Say it's missing a cover, right. so you can get it for ten bucks. Who cares about the cover? Right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, hey, that's uh, that in itself that you remember that yearbook and that you have it. it it's really well done. It was the year that Joe Collins was 
was going out and scouring was yeah. coming in. Um, great. I, even though, like I say, I had a love-hate relationship with him, I was honored to grow up in New York City when the Yankees were absolutely uh, unbelievable. You know, all those years, there was always a World Series played. I thought it was our birthright. And, yeah. Um, nice memories. Thanks, Jack. I enjoy sharing them with you. Well, anytime, Ralph. It's always great to talk some baseball. All right, my friend. Thank you. We'll talk again really soon. If you're okay, listening to the Comfortably Zone Radio Network, Yankee Baseball, Past, Present, and Future, I'm Ralph Tycho, the weak link of it all. The proceeding was a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you for listening.